Hello everyone and welcome to this video where I will be explaining how to install PHP version 5.6 onto Windows 7. I've set up here a, a blank, a new virtual machine running Windows 7 Professional. So I have nothing else installed on this uh, operating system other than the base Windows installation. And of course that includes uh, Internet Explorer. Uh, and what we will need to install is we will need to download and install PHP. We will also then to need to install um, IIS, in this case, Internet Information Services, which is Microsoft's web server software. And then we will need to configure IIS to use PHP um, in order to be able to serve PHP files. So we're going to start by visiting um, a website, which is windows.php.net forward slash download and if you forget this URL you can just get to this from the normal PHP website uh, php.net um, click the download tab click the Windows link and it will bring you to this page um, or you can search for it um, and if we look right at the top of here we have the latest version of PHP which is 5.6 and you'll see we have four different flavors um, to download uh, depending on what exactly we want there are two x86 versions, the 32-bit versions, um, and these are the production-ready ones uh, that are tested, that are solid, um, and that's what we're going to use. There are also two 64-bit builds. Uh, as it says, they're currently experimental. So although I have used them and they seem to work okay, um, don't use the 64-bit versions for any production environment just yet until they're signed off uh, by the people who develop PHP. Um, now in terms of which of these 32-bit versions we want, you'll see that one of them is non-thread safe and one is thread safe. And you might be tempted to think that we want the thread safe version because that sounds good. Um, however, IIS doesn't um, use multiple threads for a request and so using a thread safe version will just slow down uh, your web server for no actual purpose. So we're going to download the x86 non-thread safe version um, and notice that which is the version of Visual C++ it's been built with. So more on that in a minute. So I've downloaded that um, and it's just a zip file, uh, nice and easy. And we need to obviously extract all the files from here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put them into program files x86 which is the 32-bit program files folder and I'm also going to put them into a subdirectory of that uh, and the reason I'm going to do that is because it is possible to have multiple versions of PHP installed so rather than having a single folder by having um, a top level PHP folder and then 564 that will probably do um, and click OK. OK, oh, it doesn't like that because I've put it in two new um, two new folders. So if I create the top level one, PHP, and then try that again. No, what doesn't it like? Okay, so C program files x86 PHP PHP. Okay, let's create that folder as well. I'm not sure why it's not creating them for me. It might be because of um, user access permissions. That's what happens when you uh, try, try to do all of this um, on the fly. So okay, I've created those folders. If you have user access controls disabled or turned down to a suitable level, then um, the zip extractor should create all these folders for you, but obviously it didn't like uh, doing that. But um, that's basically it for the PHP installation. It's not really an install. It's just copying um, those files into a folder. I'm just gonna quickly um, enable uh, the extensions just so we can see what's going on. The one that's important here, php.exe is the actual interpreter itself, but this CGI executable is the one that we're going to use um, for IIS um, in order for IIS to call into 
um, php.exe. Um, you can, if you want, put PHP uh, a path to that exe into your um, path, and that helps when you're debugging things on the command line. And if you use PHP scripts like Composer um, and those kind of things, then you're going to need PHP.exe to be accessible from anywhere on the command line. Um, but we're not going to bother with that for now. We've uh, done the PHP. So the next thing we need to do is install IIS, the, the web server. So what we're going to do is you can get to this from the control panel, but you can also run optional features.exe. Um, and this, hopefully you're familiar with, allows you to choose Windows modules that are not installed by default and allows you to install um, you know, additional functionality. So this one here, Internet Information Services, there's a couple of things we're going to want. We're going to want the IIS Management Console. Um, and then under the actual services itself, we're going to need CGI. If you're going to be developing other things like ASP.NET and what have you, by all means, tick, tick those now. Um, but for now, we shouldn't need that. And then if we look under common HTTP features, I'm going to want the default document, which allows me to specify index.php as a default if the user doesn't type that into the browser. Um, I'm not going to use directory browsing, but I want static content. So that allows static HTML pages. I'm not quite sure why that isn't included by default. Um, and here I'm just going to include some logging because if things go wrong, it's usually very easy just to um, just to turn logging on and find out what's going on. In terms of performance and security, um, I'm not going to be bothered too much about that. So we're just going to... Um, install these extra features which shouldn't take too long um, and the first thing we're, we're then going to do is just test the the basic IIS setup just to make sure it's kind of installed and seems to be working okay and again we'll do that in the browser once this is finished Okay, so IIS has finished installing. So what we're going to do now, just to test that that worked okay, is we're going to open a tab, and we're just going to go to localhost, um, and we're going to see, oh, good old Internet Explorer. It's going to see whether we have IIS. So here we go. It basically showing us this page. It's the static page which says that IIS is working. Now, since we've installed PHP, um, the question would be, what happens if we create um, a PHP file? If we go into inetpub www root, if we create a PHP file in here, which we can't do because of user access control. So what I'm going to do is just run up Notepad. Um, and we're just going to use... Uh, an echo statement to echo out PHP info, which is a built-in um, PHP function which outputs all of the relevant information about PHP. I could put this all into, um, put the HTML tags into this document, um, which I should do, but I'm not gonna bother for now, um, just to save time. So I'm gonna click save, and it's gonna ask me where I want to put it. So I'm gonna go to Where's my computer? Computer C, inetpub, www.root. Www I'm going to save it as test.php. Um, and if I save that, save in the loop folder. It's just annoying, isn't it? Save that. Right, so it doesn't, didn't like me going there, so... I'm going to go into here, take that out, put it back into here, and hopefully it will now ask me whether I want to. Um, obviously on, on your computer, this is all to do with user access control. Um, and there are certain things that seem really difficult to do. One of the reasons is I'm not, I haven't been running these programs as, as administrator. And if I was, this would probably, probably be working okay. So I've eventually put my test.php into here. 
And if I actually go back to this and I try and go to test.php, I'll actually get an error. And the reason is at the minute, IIS is not set up um, to, to serve PHP files. It doesn't know what to do with them. So it's just gonna ignore it and return a 404 error. So we need to go into IIS and we need to configure that. So we run up the IIS console. The general layout of this, if you're not familiar, is that you have your server on the left. You can connect to remote um, machines as well if you have that module installed. And then you have a group of websites of which there is one by default. And the application pools are define the users that run these websites on behalf of your computer. So obviously there's also one in there. But if we click back on the server and we go to handler mappings, at the minute, this is uh, these are the only files that um, are allowed to be served um, by this IIS. If we click, click on the site itself, we can also go into handler mappings and again, they're inherited from the server. Um, but we clearly need a mapping for uh, PHP. So we're going to add a module mapping and the request path is just going to be start.php, which is nice and easy. The module is the fast CGI module, um, and that's the mechanism that IIS will use to try and call the handler for PHP. A fast CGI or CGI is, is a standard. And then I browse to my PHP executable, which I put in here, in here, in here. Now be careful, we want to choose um, the CGI XE, not PHP.exe, we want CGI.exe. Um, and then we can just give it a name like PHP uh, via fast CGI or something like that. Let me click OK. Say, do you want to do that? Yes. The other thing I forgot to do was um, we can add some slight uh, security restrictions and we can say only actually invoke this if you find a file or folder with the right name. Um, and that's just to make it a little bit more secure for people trying to, to hack into our servers. So if you go back now and do test, I think this will crash. Okay, so what's happened here is we have an internal server error. So in this case, IS has tried to serve this PHP file, but it's failed. Um, and I know why it's failed. It's failed because if we go back to here, um, the PHP downloads page, if you notice, it says more recent versions of PHP are built using Visual C++ um, and newer versions of Windows don't include the Visual C++ runtimes um, by default. So we need to download and install it. And because our one was a VC11, it says here that we click on this link and we download um, the redistributable. So we hit download. It'll ask us which one we want. I'm not sure if it matters because I have 32-bit PHP, but I might as well download the 32-bit uh, version of this just to make sure. Um, and hopefully this will download. We'll run it. And this will in install um, some DLLs that are used by um, Visual C++ programs. So this will take an amount of time and then that's finished. And if we now go back to here without rebooting, we now have a working PHP page. Um, this is very useful because, um, especially if you ha end up with more than one version of PHP, if things aren't working, you can find out, for instance, which PHP INI file um, is being used. So in this case, it's actually using C Windows for the PHP INI rather than um, your PHP folder. Um, so there's things like that which will make it easier for you to debug what's going on. Um, it also includes information about what um, extensions are enabled and what have you. Um, and it's important to note that if you change your php.ini, PHP doesn't automatically reload that. So what you will need to do in the case of IIS is after changing PHP ini, if you start the task manager, you will find, if we show all processes, you will find one called PHP CGI, which is there. 
and what you have to do is end that process so you end that process and then when you reload the PHP page IAS will reload PHP CGI and PHP CGI will reload your php.ini so that's it this is not taken too long um, and that's gone from zero to having a fully working system obviously you might already have um, IAS installed in which case you just need to check that you have the CGI um, module installed which you probably will because it's required for other things um, and so that leaves you just with downloading PHP and configuring the handler mapping but hopefully you enjoyed this if any questions or comments please put them in the comment section below thank you very much